Stephen Herbert, I'm a professor in Stockholm School of Agriculture. You are at the Agricultural Learning Lab, Center. Um, labs in biology and chemistry and so forth. But uh, you don't have good labs for agriculture. So this is a place where you can learn by doing. And back in the very early days of UMass, which was Mass Aggie then, Levi Stockbridge said, we have to learn by doing. Uh, we could do something to help honeybees and other native pollinators because of the decline in bee numbers um, nationally, actually globally. And so we have planted pollinator gardens with a sequential planting, flowering different species that start supposedly in March, April and go right through to October getting taller as we can just walk quickly down through the garden and then go to the next way. So it's not it's not good nectar flow. And so what we're trying to demonstrate is that you can have overlapping flowering plants starting flowering in May, overlapping with June, overlapping with July, August, September, October, then there is potential for bees to um, get nectar or some along, whereas they don't necessarily want nectar. And so we have, this is the Grange symbol, the seven sides to it representing the seven founding members of um, the Grange, it's an agricultural organization. They have a P and an H where our two rocks are. Uh, the P stands for Patrons of Husbandry. And so it's an agricultural organization and they're um, doing some good things. So there's one mix, compound mix, mixture of many species there. Another one here. Are doing other things as well. I think that Ian back, some of you may know Ian. He's doing a food farm for the other pollination gardens. And uh, his butterflies and hummingbirds don't do as good a job at pollinating as do other insects. But here on this area last year, we counted about 25, 30 different bee species. A lot of them bumblebees, a lot of ground nesting bees, but native pollinators. We've got different compound mixes, 